Hi everyone, I'm Galactic Ashley and this is Mahana and we are here to welcome you officially with divine intention to this YouTube space that we are very officially starting today. So with that, welcome and thank you for being here. So welcome. Um, I am officially welcoming you all into this space and officially welcoming myself into this space. So I'm going to uh, briefly introduce myself and then speak for a moment about why we are here in this space and why it was maybe challenging. <laughs> to officially start in this space. So um, first, I am Galactic Ashley, and I channel divine guidance for star seeds, connecting them to their star families and galactic lineages. I use light language frequencies and work with your cosmic connections to facilitate high frequency healing transmissions and encoded activations. Um, additionally, um, I am also part of the Crystal Skull Council, and so that is a separate website. So I'm at galacticashley.com and also crystalskullcouncil.com. And while the messages are similar, the way that the messages come through and what we do is slightly different, um, but the Crystal Skull Council <laughs> is made up of a growing collective of activated crystal skull beings and their guardian and channel, me and Mahana, who you just met a moment ago. And the Crystal Skull Council manifested to be a heart-centered service with the intention to articulate wisdom from the Crystal Skull conscious field that shares divine guidance in support of our ascension in union with Gaia. Give guidance on crystalline DNA transformations, provide activations, and much more. Um, we also have a Crystal Skull podcast that will be launching soon, all in divine timing and divine order. Um, it's called the Skullcast Podcast, and um, I will be mentioning that in here soon. So with that, um, so I am a, a channel. I specifically, my natural energy system channels and is most comfortable with um, galactic beings. And I have 10-week uh, programs during the year called Galactic Guided Intensives. And the next one from the time that I am recording this is called the uh, Meet the Galactics. And I'm actually really excited about this one. So I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about that because I, I want to make this more about an introduction <laughs> and an intention setting to uh, being a part of YouTube. But um, the Galactic Guided Intensives are um, four times a year. Uh, we do light language and channeling which is coming up later this year we just finished the light language course and the next one is meet the galactics and so i will briefly speak about that um it is a very it's a brand new course i'm really excited about it the beings have been coming in for months just pouring in information um transmissions and sort of volunteering to come through and to work with the group there are still uh regist the registration is still open uh first day of class starts on July 21st. This is 2021. And um, I'm really excited. So come and find out what star nations you resonate with the most. And if you're interested in um, really embodying and bringing in your star seed uh, consciousness and connecting to your um, galactic, um, your multi-dimensionality, your galactic selves, you know, remember that we are um, part of the cosmic community we are there already i know oftentimes humans don't necessarily see themselves as that but that is what we are so without further ado um i just want to set the space welcome you all here 
welcome myself here and just uh, state the intention that we are in this space together, that this safe, that this space is safe and that I am able to bring through uh, messages, transmissions and frequencies that are in divine light and service to you regardless if there are a billion followers or not um, we are definitely practicing self-awareness and love and light and that our value is not um, contingent upon the amount of followers or on what we believe to be some sort of benchmark because we are all much more than that so with that, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, and we love you, we love you, we love you. So we are in service to others in with love and light. And so that is the intention that we are putting out. And may we magnetize the beings, the humans, <laughs> and their beings so that we can be um, in service of you and your journey. So with that being said, if any of you have any questions um, that you would like uh, divine guidance around, specifically from a cosmic perspective, um, maybe you're a wanderer or a starseed or a dragon or an indigo or a blu-ray or a blueprinter or you know that this place is your home and you want in you are you are uh, just a solid hardcore light worker and you align with the um, mystery schools and you have questions it's very beneficial and helpful for us to have questions to uh, be able to serve you better. So you can email me at info at galacticashley.com or go ahead and put the questions in the comments and then we will come to it. All right, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about the journey here and sort of the divine timing and the kind of the interesting aspects of it. Um, there's a purpose to this and the purpose is if you are out there and you are trying to or wanting to start something new um, but it's maybe not happening or you know you're supposed to be in some place or some space whether it be YouTube or something else I hope that this helps you so for a while the beings have been <laughs> talking about YouTube and I'm like okay so I uh, bought a microphone years ago and I, I use it um, especially, you know, I do a lot of live online um, events and in my courses and classes and during sessions, right, because I do star sessions, um, connect people to their star families um, and do these uh, special 30-minute sessions where uh, specific beings will come in and they'll want to provide 30-minute readings just on, on one day and that's just something that you kind of have to pay attention to. Um, or sign up for my mailing list and I'll make those announcements. Um, we do have one coming up, but we're not going to get distracted. <laughs> so uh, a lot of the things that came up, so first it was get a, you're going to have a podcast or something. And I was like, uh, okay. Um, so I got a microphone. I'm really grateful that I got the microphone. It's been very beneficial and useful, especially with the light language and all this Zoom stuff that's been happening. Um, the other thing is, is for many months, <laughs> YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And I'm like, eh, but I'm on Vimeo. <laughs> I'm not really on Vimeo because none of my videos are public because I make tons and tons of videos and I channel tons of information, but it's all for my community. And they're wanting me to be more public. So I was like, fine. And they said, you're going to start with the solstice. And so I was like, okay, that's great. That's um, great. Well, we brought through a lot of information and basically all about the feminine wound and so I literally before the solstice I'm sitting in front of the computer and I'm ready but I'm getting distracted and I'm not wanting to do it and I'm resisting and even prior to this I would sit down to do something but because I knew it was for YouTube I was like I don't know I'm not feeling it however if anybody in any one of my courses asks me a question um, I have no problem and usually a big influx of energy will come in. I'll sit down and 
Yes, Mahana is agreeing. <laughs> this is why we introduce her is because she participates. She says, yes, she's a witness to all of this. Um, I will sit down and I will uh, channel something or bring through a bunch of information. So I'm, that's the benefit of being in the group, right? Like you have a question you ask and I will have a whole Q&A section in these 10-week courses. Um, very, very uh, um, helpful to ask the questions and it's great to be in a community like that, both for me as the facilitator, right? So I'm just, uh, not just now, but I recognize and I'm very clear that even though I don't know everybody in these groups, these groups are, uh, these Galactic Guided Intensives, there are two groups that run each time, but in each group, especially for the channeling uh, course and the light language course, because there's so much partner work and so much kind of one-on-one -on -one work, and it's really important that there's a, a space to share, I get, I'm very comfortable <laughs> with the, um, the 12 people. The being, I just started coughing. The beings are calling me out. <clears throat> In the beginning, I wasn't always comfortable. I was nervous. Um, but it's over time, I'm very comfortable with the people that are in the group. Even though I don't know everyone, there's like 12 people, 12 to 14 people in each group. It's very manageable. And they, they're they vulnerable with you. You're vulnerable with them. They recognize that you are a human being and that I, for one, am not perfect. I am here doing my best to not only bring in messages and transmissions, but in order for me to bring them in, I have to have them <clears throat> um, integrated in with my system at least enough so that I've experienced it first before I can bring it in for other people. So sometimes, uh, depending on the event or what's happening, there can be like a huge amount of energy or something that I am personally going through and healing and as the beings say, um, lift and enlighten, heal and forgive. So that is constantly going on um, with me. <laughs> find it fascinating that <clears throat> my my throat is acting up right now. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> so <clears throat> all of this is to say, <laughs> um, well, so we'll go back a second. So I get comfortable in these spaces, even though before each one starts, there's usually a big influx of en energy. But I'm always comfortable, right? Because we're all recognizing e each other as human. And it's not so much about, ooh, YouTube comments, what are people going to say? Because that's more of a reflection of the people that are doing the, the commenting um, more than it has to do with me. However... There is a blessing, so if any of you um, do struggle with uh, critique or comments, it, it is really beneficial to remember that if you're being activated by these comments um, or animated, excuse me, not activated, but if you're becoming animated, then really that comment gave you a gift, right? Because there is some sort of resonant frequency within your system that is creating um, some, it is creating the animation in you. And what I mean by animation is maybe you becoming upset or, or it having an effect on you. So it wasn't really about these it's not even about the comments, um, although when I tuned into that, it was more about m me being uh, maybe concerned or slightly upset about the comments that I don't really even care about, and it really doesn't even have anything to, to do with the comments. It has something to do with um, showing up to a space where you don't have any idea <laughs> who's showing up too, right? And and what's kind of happening or, or even going on. And so this goes to, so I um, identify as being um, a female and I was born in a female body. So for that, I am blessed. Um, that hasn't been um, an identity struggle and I definitely feel for those of you out there that are out there that have gone through this and I honor you for your journey and that journey is very beneficial uh, to the planet. 
um, at this time. And I know it's hard to see that um, when you're in it, but I want you all to know um, that the L, you know, that you LGBT plus community out there and people that are uh, tr uh, transgender, whether you are transitioning or can't transition, what you are bringing to the collective is extremely important. And so what I am about to say <clears throat> can benefit you, especially if you are someone who knows that you are female but you were born in a male body. So what is uh, fascinating about this whole YouTube, YouTube resistance stuff, normally I can kind of just like move through stuff and we just move it along, but they, uh, the being said, okay, you're going to start with the solstice. So, okay, so I'm tuning into the solstice energies. We start with the solstice. I kind of, I understand what's going on and, and all of this is, is is available to you uh, right now is um, and it's some kind of they ended up being a lot longer than I thought and most everything that I post my intention is oh I'm just gonna do it for 15 minutes and then it's just <sighs> stuff comes out um, <clears throat> what is going on right now has to do and what I mean by going on is the energies that are available the solar winds the solar flares everything having to do with the sun the solstice the alignment the last equinox the equinox before that this whole entire year all the way through uh the equinox the spring equinox in 2022 is a really really powerful time to heal the feminine wound so i sat there <laughs> Um, like from 2 a.m. on Sunday, because my uh, original intention was to do it and actually have it posted and ready to go, um, on the sun, on Sunday. And I sat there and it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I was getting frustrated. Um, I was, you know, the beings were there, the energy was there, but it like wasn't happening. So all of a sudden, now it's no longer 2 a.m. on Sunday, it's 8.30 and it's the time of the solstice. So the energy kind of clears and I'm like, Ooh, all right, I feel this. We're going to do this. So I decide I'm going to break it up into two parts. So the first part I do, and then the second part I like can't do, but I sit there and I'm trying to do it and I'm trying to do it. And, and now it's like, I'm so sleep deprived at this point. And the, <laughs> the reason why I'm trying so hard is because I'm, I really want to get it out there because they're like, you got to get it out there. And I'm also, I decided that I was going to go to my dad's house to go visit my dad because it was Father's Day, right? Well, none of that happened. So now Father's Day is over and I'm still determined to get it done so that I can leave Monday really early because, you know, I'm repeating patterns for myself, right? Always showing up later than I want um, in some other time zone realm. Um, but the beings always remind me that um, they... And I also, uh, we operate on um, develop, we operate on development progress, not time, right? So time has meaning because we live in this dimension where time exists, right? But it, so here's a side thing. When, when you are working with your beings, and you want something to happen, and it's not happening. And when they say divine timing and divine order, so much of that has to do with your developmental progress. And the way that in a physical body, the way that we are able to bring in information and energy and wisdom, and, in, and eventually wisdom, right? Because when we bring in knowledge and information, it must be embodied before it becomes wisdom, right? That is a progress uh, that is a prog that's progress right so if you're on the ascension path it's not none of it is linear so it's very much about compassion and so my experience <laughs> this last week is is essentially that and i am frustrated because this is not normal 
for me. It's like just do it and, and get it up there. So I can also promise you that I will not be editing um, any of these videos because if I start getting into that, then then my artist self, um, I have an MFA for <laughs> University of Arizona and I did uh, multimedia installations. And so I'm very aware <laughs> of what I believe video needs to and should look like. And I can't get into that for these because the vibration and the frequency and the information is um, um, and the energetic aesthetic trumps everything else so I will just say that right now so I will say um and pause and things might be awkward and that's just the way that it is and I'm just free-flowing talking right now um, because I know that this is going to help somebody um, out there so I'm struggling Sunday I'm struggling Monday finally I just I can't do it I, I have to leave um, otherwise I'll just sit there and like torture myself until until I can like make it happen and then it becomes very forced so on the drive I'm like okay what what is happening why isn't this working and the beings very clearly said um it is so I started over mentalizing things right um, there's been a lot of, and this is, this is common for me and I'm sure it's a common for a lot of you. And I always say that the, the fast track, if you do want to fast track something, um, definitely go into business for yourself in the metaphysical world, um, because it, it will fast track you on your ascension path, um, because you always have to be expand. Well, you don't always have to be, but for me, it's like I, there, there must be more expansion and expansion and integration and expansion and holding presence and space and moving through things and just being extremely aware so what can I heal what needs to be healed let's do the healing let's dig around in our subconscious let's do shadow work um, these are all the things that I'm really into so I'm kind of like appalled <laughs> I can't move through this so the first thing that they said is we um, want you to pay attention to the feminine wound right it, because the people that are going to be watching this are going to be not this but the the solstice one are going to be needing to work through their feminine wound because that was what all of the energies were about um acknowledging and witnessing the feminine wound and how it goes through um our our planetary history how it's embedded in our um sub in our um collective consciousness and and everything and how the voice has uh, the, the female voice specifically has been uh, shut down and wounded. So they're like, well, we're bringing that up for you so that you understand what people are experiencing so that you can feel them, right? And then the second thing is, is they really made this clear and I think this is really beneficial and important and so I hope that you hear this whether or not you are male or female um, in a body everybody has and I know that you all know this but it bears repeating is that you all have masculine and feminine energy right we all have that in us at all times so when you right now we have a toxic masculine and a wounded feminine so because the energies are aligning right now to heal the wounded feminine and because the toxic masculine can't actually be healed unless the wounded uh, feminine is at least healed enough or or healed first because it's very much female first uh there's polarities so what do we mean by female first we mean the um there's a, a science uh, that says that even though during conception, um, the sex or gender of the child is already determined, what happens is, is that the, it, every child is female first uh, until, they, until if they have the XY chromosome then they like shift into being male and why is that important that is important because during the creation of this universe it was the female aspect that was sent out first 
So it's very much female first. So people talk about disclosure. When is the disclosure going to happen? If anybody's been paying attention to the disclosure movement, it's very masculine. And there is nothing wrong with that. So I need everyone to understand and to hear me when I say nothing wrong with masculine energy. It's very important. And there's nothing wrong with feminine energy, but those two need to work together, right? So feminine first. So feminine wound heals first. And then we can work with the talk with the toxic masculine. I have no doubt <laughs> that all the energies next year around March and with the next year's solstice are absolutely going to have to do with um, male energy. But the female is really going to have to come on board um, because you can't have consensus. You can't have anything without the divine feminine but we actually have no idea what the divine feminine is and i'm going to talk about this um later somewhere else i don't have to put everything in here <laughs> so the, the the point of all of this is if you are watching this and you are out there and you are trying to start something and if you are even like me and it's like not working and you're like what is going on and the beings are like the feminine wound because I kept on asking, is this because I am, um, can, I don't want to put myself out there, like not in this sort of uncontrolled way? And they said yes. And I, I was so just doing like soul inquiry, um, which is just a lot of question asking. And so it essentially came down to the feminine wound is the part generally within each of us where we feel not good enough and a lot of people have that a lot of empaths have that ma uh, male or female doesn't matter non-binary um, however you identify um, whoever and whatever you are embodied as um, if you feel not worthy if you doubt yourself these are all the feminine wound coming forward if you feel that you're not good enough if you feel that you're not ready I mean really tune into the not ready part right like if you sign up for a marathon and you haven't run for five years and that marathon is in a month you probably aren't ready right so there are really clear points of discernment and obvious kind of things that are happening but really this energy of never feeling ready even when you've prepared that is the divine feminine that is the feminine wound and and you can go ahead and look at the the solstice there's two med <laughs> two meditations um two meditations and then um there's a part one and a part two and then a whole separate other other um experience uh, part one is based on it's just information a lot of it an hour's worth and then part two is a pretty long um channeled uh experience and then the third one is about the the solar feminine because that's what's happening and uh it is all of us but especially the feminine aspects coming into the light and connecting with the solar energies so standing in the light because over history we've had the lemurian uh, holocaust we have had um you know 60 i think i'm not very i can never remember <laughs> numbers either 660 or 600 um million now i want to go look at this <clears throat> Okay, 60 million. All right, so it wasn't that far off. I was like, 600 million seems like a lot, but 60 million is a lot. So basically, over the period of a thousand years, um, which it's like the Holocaust for women or for the feminine. So if any of you are out there and you have memories of other lifetimes or you have this sort of innate fear within you to kind of like step out of your comfort zone, step out of the box, it is because um, we have, like I mentioned before, the Lemurian a Holocaust and before that you had a, a million, a million other wars um, that were going on and the, the patriarchy started to really uh, gain a, a lot of power. So I'm not really going to get into all the history right now and also I'm not the best at linear history at all I'm very much aligned with everything 
all of history is taking place in this infinite now moment which the beauty of that is is that when you are present in this moment and you look at, in at these energies and you're able to re recover these fragments and, and aspects of yourself and reintegrate them back in with your soul you are able to change the trajectory of your future which is also happening in this moment right now that we are um, to, that we are speaking together right so you have um 60 million uh, women that are murdered for being witches or uh doing any kind of healing work this also goes in, into the druids as as well um that that culture and the history and how uh shamans were healing or the how they were wisdom keepers and during their time the the female voice has been completely written out of history so the whole point of this is, is the beings were like well it's your feminine wound right it's coming up it's your resistance is the feminine wound so look at it do the healing do the work and just get out there and so anytime you're being asked to step into the light or to expand who you are if you can look at it as it really not having anything to do, not that it doesn't have anything to do with you, but for me personally, it helps me to understand the, the bigger perspective about what is happening. Because then when they told me that, I was like, oh, you know, I got a little teary eyed and I was like, that makes, that makes sense. And so now I can move forward with that, right? Because that is my feminine wound, my feminine aspects that um, have been told you know in this in this lifetime as well right because these are patterns we're going to bring these patterns back and each time a pattern comes back around you have an opportunity to work with that energy to lift and enlighten it heal and forgive it um, really ultimately f uh, healing yourself because the these energies will keep coming up you can't get away from what you have put in the darkness or what you have allowed to be put in the darkness so this is also why i say that we have absolutely no idea what the feminine the divine feminine is but what we can do is we can heal the feminine wound and activate or uh, find access to our the divine to the excuse me to the feminine principle and to connect to the solar feminine because the feminine has been programmed in such a way where it is associated with the moon well it's not just associated with the moon it is also associated with the sun so what's happening right now is that it is the solar energies it is the solar feminine principle that wants to be recognized and what does that mean that means that you me we need to bring the feminine wound up and bring it into the light and now is the time and how that manifests itself and presents itself in your world and your reality um, will be different for everyone for me one part of it will be youtube for you, it might be holding your first course or applying for a job that you actually are ready for. And then when you apply for that job and you have that interview to ask for what you for, to ask for fair pay, right? Remember, we're not trashing the masculine. That is not what this is about. We are bringing up the feminine wound to heal it and to honor it. We need to witness what needs to be healed, to see the divine in everything. So now is the time to ask yourself, where have you been denying the divine within your feminine aspects? And to allow them to come forward and and, and eventually some of you are going to need to deal with the um, to deal with to get to play with the masculine the toxic masculine right but um so i'm just sharing this this was a very long introduction um we did our official welcoming but i'm just sharing my own resistance to being here in this space with the hope that and also the irony and and how kind of funny and tongue-in-cheek and funny I think it is that the beings uh, sort of went about it this way but mostly when this happens it's to remind me what other people are also experiencing within the collective so we are very much in this together and uh, when just 
feel into your feminine wound, see where you are keeping it in the dark. If you, um, and you don't even have to believe in past lifetimes or any of that, just think about this one. Think about all the times, and this is very true for me. I was told that I was too much. I was told to shut up. You don't know. You don't know. And a lot of that is coming from um, uh, parents or, or people that are in in fear of what their of what their child is saying because I know I said a lot of weird things um you know I I was connected to things and saying stuff that I'm sure sounded uh, like the people around me didn't want to hear it I was just a child right so um, told to, to be quiet, you're too loud, you talk too much, you don't know. Um, and this is very much shutting down the voice. So then you develop, an, or I did, I developed an appreciation for the voice, but I found my voice through documentary arts and photography and art. And then there became a point where I needed to actually use my voice. But I also part part of my own voice trauma and that wounded part of my own journey means that I have a huge appreciation for the voice and understand that people need to be heard. So we're simultaneously being asked to release the need um, to be heard, right? Because that is the wounded part of ourself that is proving to people that we are worthy and that we deserve to be here. So when you are in your divine alignment and you are being your authentic self, you understand and recognize that you are here, that you are divine, that you deserve to be here because everyone deserves to be here, right? And you no longer need to prove yourself to anyone because you know exactly who you are and you are comfortable with that and you're not trying to make people who you think they should be and you're not trying to prove yourself um, because you think you should be a certain way and you aren't trying to manage the perceptions of how you think other people should see you, right? And so for me, I wasn't, I don't consider myself a controlling person, but I must recognize that um, this is especially true for empaths. Empaths will frequently um, uh, self they will criticize themselves out loud in front of someone else if they feel that they've done something wrong in order to control the criticism. That way they feel that they have control over the situation, at least the repercussions of what they believe to be a bad thing that they have done, whether it's being late or something. So what I mean by this is if you show up late somewhere or to work or whatever, what you do is you first say, I'm so sorry, I'm such an idiot, I don't know what my problem is blah 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 this and this happened right and then that person was like oh well they know that they've done something wrong so I don't need to say anything so you've taken control of the situation um, but you don't actually know how they were going to respond right so what we can do is if we're trying to manage the perception of others because we don't want to place ourselves in a vulnerable position, that is the wounded part of us that's kind of trying to self-protect. So I wasn't concerned with the comments so much, but I was concerned with how others maybe might perceive me. But I wasn't, that wasn't the thing. I was upset at myself for being concerned about that. And that is usually my issue is like, two or three things away I'm upset at the way that I'm feeling because I know better than this I shouldn't be like that I am very aware of what's happening I don't care about the comments because they don't have I mean the negative ones right like that's people just being people and doing whatever they need to do and ultimately a negative comment if it's animating will be a, a, a healing will be a kind of an arrow pointing at what needs to heal in me. So this is me encouraging you to bring your divine feminine out, 
or let us say the feminine principle. Um, there is there will be future things about the divine feminine. Again, I believe that we need to heal the feminine wound, create space, invite the divine feminine in so that we can actually experience her because it is not what we think that it is. And the because the feminine has been so wounded and so programmed and so silenced and erased from history, um, it, it in the you know in the Bible like we we uh, experience pain when we give birth. In Genesis three sixteen in in um, Genesis three sixteen in pain you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be your husband. That's not true, but subconsciously that's a program we've all brought it in, and it's painful to give birth. Um, so that's a belief system. So, you know, two on that, right? Like these are how deep this runs in our subconscious, how we've ac accepted it, right? That, that, the, that the female is not to be valued. Why? Because the female is a powerful force. That is the creatrix. That is the creator. So if you want to have power over something, take out the take out the the female aspects take out the artists anytime in history when you look at when a, a dictator is about to take over the artists are kicked out they're threatened um you have uh everybody's a heretic and you're out to to just you kill the people that you can't control or that uh, when they're in their power and they have balance. So in the case of the masculine and feminine, when those two energies come together and they're balanced and they honor each other, that is when we are the most powerful. And, and this is all within you, right? So there's no part of me telling you to heal your feminine wound and then go out and find a, a masculine counterpart that might happen for some of you and that is awesome but we have to make our wholeness within us and so anytime we have something that comes up like this like for me with the youtube the resistance there is always a reason and there is always an opportunity to bring healing in so I too am with you and may we all go forth and reach to the sun and bring our feminine aspects forward and know that all of us are meant to be here at this time. Um, all of us are worthy and valuable and when those voices come up that say that you're not, uh, sit there and witness the feminine voice within you that simply wants to be witnessed so that she can be released and um, let go of so that you can create space to invite in the feminine principle and the solar feminine into your life and to stand into the in your version of whatever the spotlight is for you maybe it's just going outside maybe it is showing up to give a presentation at your ch uh, child's preschool it doesn't matter what it is all of those voices that say that you're stupid or not worthy or not valuable enough all of those are focused on your uh, wounded feminine and so much energy is here right now to help support the healing of that um, as well as the mother wound and that will be um, a future a future thing but this was only supposed to be about me feeling all of this really intense resistance to not wanting to be in this space um, also if anybody is has been resistant to being on YouTube and you are um, really amazing because of course you are um definitely do it uh, another message that the beings said because i was re some of it i was resisting because i didn't just want it to be about business and i didn't want to do it because everybody else is doing it um i wanted to make a like a very sovereign and conscious choice and so the other thing that they said was um, it is beneficial for you to be in this space because these transmissions and the energies that you are bringing in are, are brought into this consciousness field that has morphed and formed and that is growing 
that is a part of YouTube. So YouTube in and of itself is sending out all of these frequencies and some of them are really beneficial and some of them are not, right? So to bring your light into this space. So I encourage all of you that are listening to this to also bring your light into this space. And if you have been feeling nudges or you have felt inspired to also create a YouTube channel or to be somewhere out there, like out there in this weird, um, this weird web technological space that we are all connecting through, um, do that. Just follow your truth and your guidance. If ever you feel like doing something and there is inspiration that is attached to that thought, and that thought is positive, that is you in your divine alignment, and that is divine guidance that is guiding you. So we have a lot of thoughts during the days, but it's during the day, it's the one, it's the thought that you have that has inspiration and motivation that is attached to it. So with that, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for listening. And I am uh, looking forward to and really grateful to be in this new interesting space. Um, and I look forward to growing with you. And with that, uh, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And we love you, we love you, we love you.